Again, I keep in mind not only the stuff that I may need to grab instantly in a survival situation, but I try to keep stuff which has a danger of being punctured away from stuff that could puncture it. So a lot of that kind of stuff is on the outside of my pack. Here we have something essential, which any any mechanic or anyone who's mechanically inclined is going to know exactly what it is and its usefulness. Here we have a ratchet strap. Single, regular ratchet strap. What would you need this for in a survival situation? Absolutely anything. I could use this in a tarp to string up a lean-to. I could use this to, geez, do about anything with a ratchet strap. I think I have a lot of handy stuff here that maybe some people didn't think about. A lot of people, when they, when they do a survival kit, they're thinking about things like water purification tablets, uh, ways to keep uh, themselves clean, things like that, and those are all good. Maybe vitamins, uh, MREs, water, things like those are all good, but they didn't rank terribly high on my list. Let me put this down for a second, and I'll tell you why. In a situation like what we're describing, it's likely going to start off in an urban area. You're going to have access to that kind of stuff. I'm not promoting looting, but in a situation of mass hysteria, you're going to have access to water and things like that at first. As things progress, then deeper in here, I'll have more of those kind of survival things packed. And that said, we do have some of those survival things packed already. Let's take a look at this bottom pocket. This bottom pocket right here, I keep one pair of gloves, the ones I'm wearing right now. These are my shooting all-purpose gloves. These are mechanic gloves. Mechanic gloves are really the best. They allow you great uh, finger dexterity and protection. In this bottom pocket, we also have a headlamp. And this is also where I put my Ear Pro. And we have one more tool kit. I couldn't fit all the tools that I wanted in my main bag on, in the bag on the belt. So the other tools I have here in this pouch. And I'll talk about the specific tools I'm using and why in a later video. So here we have another layout of the deemed essential tools and ever essential zip ties. There's a lot of fasteners in here. I have black tape, duct tape, zip ties, um, bungee cords, which I'll get to. There's a lot of fasteners in here. One thing I learned, and you know, as a mechanic with that kind of experience, rigging stuff together, fasteners hold the world together. Like people don't joke when they say duct tape holds the world together or the universe or however they say it because it does so i have a lot of fasteners and this fits nicely in the bottom of that bottom pouch we're just going to throw this back on the ground for now continue on now in the top pouch here in the top outside pouch here i actually have emergency food rations the reason so this should be in the bottom of the pack this is not something i ever expect to have to access the reason this is where it is is because I don't want these to get punctured. These are these are uh, vacuum packed, basic uh, emergency calorie and protein packs. Not designed not designed to be super tasty like an MRE. But look how compact this is. I could probably live for a week off of this one pack alone. That's why I have them in a separate pack inside a pouch on the outside, so this doesn't get punctured. Also in that pouch, I have more paracord and then black tape aka electrical tape i also have in there i have a roll of that in there um, tape and paracord are two things i have all over this kit and i'll show you some easy tips some really cool tips on packing tape really compactly to get it where you want to get it let's go ahead and put this back in this top pouch here in my original design when I originally started building this gold bag, I had a different bag. The bag I was using was an older one. It didn't have a molly system on it. And so I had a lot of stuff crammed into, you know, had only like three big pouches and everything was crammed in there. One thing I'll say again with the molly system, it allows me to have um, purpose built, you know, this holds this, you know, this holds this. We turn this on the side. We have another magazine pouch here. These are really cheap on eBay. I bought a pack of three of these magazine molly pouches for like 10 bucks. Um, really cheap. This is fasteners. Various kinds of bungees and things like that. Bungees, carabiners, things like that are in here. We turn to the other side. And we have another molly pouch right here. This is in a... I mean, this is... This was originally... This molly pouch is made for a trauma kit. But I use it to hold an any tool. Uh, it's pretty out of the way. It's pretty lightweight. It's compact. I don't even notice it's here. If it's right on the side of the pack, why not have an e-tool? 
I mean, you could even use it as a pretty deadly weapon, actually, I think, in a situation if you had to. I'm not sure how effective it would be digging holes out here where I live in the Rocky Mountains. But, okay, so going into the main meat of the pack, this video is becoming a lot more thorough than I originally intended. The main meat of the pack, primarily what I have in here is cold weather gear. Um, easy access cold weather gear. I have cold weather gear, of course, of Gore-Tex jackets and pants and things like that in the sea bag. This is for cold weather gear, masks, gloves, things like that, that you may want quicker access to. If it gets cold really fast, you may have time to get some gloves on, and then when you get settled, then you can get the rest of your gear on. And I do have the canteen that goes in this pouch that was back on the belt. It's a collapsible two-quart canteen. So it fits easily in here. It currently has nothing in it. But again, in a society kind of breakdown situation, it wouldn't be too hard to go to a gas station bathroom and fill this sucker up. Likewise, you could fill this up in a stream, but I wouldn't recommend that without, you know, some kind of chlorine tablets or something to, you know, fix whatever may be in the water. In here is mostly, in this main pocket, is mostly cold weather stuff. And I do have one small pocket for electronic things. I have, it's probably where I bought my batteries. And I do have a charging cable there for my phone. I don't put a lot of weight on that though. That said, I also have a watch in there. Um, I think a watch is going to be more important than a smartphone in an SHTF situation. I really do. All right, guys. So this video has been much longer than I wanted, and I may have ended up breaking this down into multiple videos. Now, that said, welcome to the channel, Always Prepped. This is the basic kind of philosophy I have behind my prepping. Next, I want to go into, maybe next we'll go into tools, what tools to take and why. You know, again, I worked as a mechanic for a few years and I think I know well enough. I have all the tools I would need to fix anything, pretty much anything short of a busted axle. I've got it in here. I also do have a, a, a larger uh, ball peen hammer and a crowbar. I have some bigger tools packed in the main pack, which you didn't see, but that's okay. We'll go into the tools in one of the next videos. Also coming up soon, we're going to have uh, periodic videos with my friend Mike, who's a firearms instructor, and he's going to help me uh, shape up a little bit, get not so rusty with the rifle, and hopefully help you guys with some safety tips and things like that. We will be shooting out here. There's a lot more stuff I want to do on this channel, Always Prepped. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That's it for today. I'm Ryan with Always Prepped. I will catch you guys next time.